Welcome back with me to the legendary age of 2012 in 6th edition Warhammer. I spent days poring over this rule book. I'm pretty sure printed in this rule book is a picture of every single model Games Workshop made. And one of those models always kind of stuck with me, and that is the Demon Prince of Nurgle. Now discontinued but I have one. Depicted in the unit type section of the book to demonstrate monstrous creatures is the Demon Prince of Nurgle in all his gloopy glory. This model never got the respect it deserved as the only God-specific Demon Prince. And he was even shown off again as an example of how to work with Games Workshop's fine cast. It seems like he was never very popular though and is now discontinued, but you know what? That's just fine with me. I love having old and weird stuff in my armies. It makes them feel that much more special. And the special doesn't just end at a discontinued Demon Prince. I also bought some Age of Sigmar bits. I'm gonna be kit bashing and converting this guy into a Demon Prince with wings. As far as Warhammer Fine Cast goes, he's not too bad. But I don't know why this model wasn't more popular. He has some really fun stuff going on, like his insect shaped plague spewer, his big shovel like sword, and who can say no to that face? I dumped it all into my ultrasonic cleaner and gave him 10 minutes on full blast. I gotta get him clean before I can make him dirty. After a little rinsey rinsey, it was time to start assembling him. All Games Workshop Fine Cast have these horrible little triangles stuck right over details. In theory, it helps the resin move through the mold, but somehow every other company's resin is better cast and doesn't have these blemishes. I have to find and carve off every last one of them. His sword was pretty badly bent, so I put it into some hot water and let it soak for a minute. This made the resin very soft, and I held it straight while I returned to room temperature, and that fixed it right up. I used some thick super glue to put him together. Thick super glue is one of my new favorite things. I feel like thick glue is just as important as ultra thin super glue. It's the right tool for the right job. And that right job is when things don't line up properly. And speaking of things not lining up properly, I mixed up some green stuff to fix some errors in the cast. His hunchback has an obvious gap, so I squeezed in some green stuff and used my toothpicks and my silicone brushes to press the putty down and make the gap disappear. I did the same thing on his belly. He might be a big old booger, but these unsightly gaps aren't the thing that's supposed to be unsightly on the model. I don't quite like the original pose of the model with his arms swinging back, so I stuck some green stuff into his armpit and made him raising his hand, like he's about to let off a little spew of plague out of his plague spewer. And to help sell the green stuff, I want to add some nurgly boils. I took my jar of microcraft beads and poured some into the cap. Then I put a drop of Elmer's glue and a drop of super glue onto a piece of scrap. I dipped the toothpick into the Elmer's, which made it just sticky enough to pick up a single bead. Then I dipped that into the super glue and then shoved it into the still wet green stuff, placing three little blisters right next to each other, in the symbol of Nurgle. My little prince has attained demonhood. And now the next trick is gonna be figuring out how to attach these wings. These are from the Age of Sigmar Puscoil Blight Lords and they're about the right size, I just gotta figure out where they go. I had planned on losing his smokestacks, replacing them with the wings, but it's kind of too much room. And I realized I like his tubes, so I glued these into position. I love these, but I did notice that as soon as the glue had dried, it gives me a lot of room on the left side, but basically no room on the right side. Gonna have to figure that out. I mixed up some green stuff and made a little gross shelf for the wings to stand on, pinching and pulling it into the rough shape of his power plant. Like his backpack has room for the smokestacks and then right under those are the wings. It's one of the more ambitious sculpting jobs I've tried. After enough poking and prodding, I had something that looked like it could have been part of the original model. On his right side, it was much tighter, working around his shoulder pad that's as big as a normal plague marine. I assume this guy has a pretty good jiggle factor, so I don't mind if he looks a little smushed. I feel like armies like Death Guard and Tyranids are much more forgiving for sculpting than Sisters of Battle would be. Now that I have the room for the wings, I put a drop of glue onto my buggy blades and stuck them into position, and I was getting a little bit too impatient. The green stuff is way too soft to hold up these big pieces, so I have to wait for them to firm up. But no big deal, after all, he needs a big ol' base. Previously, for my Lord of Contagion, I made him a fancy base out of pine bark nuggets, so I'm gonna do the same thing for my Demon Prince. I arranged the pieces of bark, sanding them flat on one side and then gluing them down with ultra-thin super glue. The bark is meant to look like stone, and to alter the edge, I added on some cork to make it a little more uneven. Then I used some kitty litter to smooth out the transition from base to wood. It would have been in keeping with Nurgle's lore to use used kitty litter, but I guess fresh will have to do right now. I smeared some texture paste all over the base to hide the cat litter, and then it was time to use up the last of my green stuff. I took this texture roller that makes up sci-fi cabling, and if I cut these into tiny segments and poke a little hole on one side for a mouth, they look like big, fat, Nurgling maggots. I made up a bunch of these and then squished them into the wet texture paste. And I love this little nurgling from the Puscoil Blightlord's kit. He looks like he's sitting, so I put him on the edge of the base. 
I glued down my demon prince and used my last Nurgling, who is posed hanging off of the Age of Sigmar Blightlords, just happens to fit perfectly holding onto my prince's leg. It's like a little kid holding onto his dad. To finish off his base, I broke out my favorite texture paste, Blejo European Mud, and smeared this all over. I really like this stuff because in addition to sand, it also has some dirt and little sticks in it, which gives it a really convincing texture. Now that the green stuff has firmed up a little bit, I stuck on the wings and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. It's like the model could have always had these wings. And another great addition from the Puscoil kit, little bells on chains. I put these on the wings and I wish I had some more. I gave my prince a once over and thought of another fun little addition I could add. His face on his knee has a little misshapen horn. I think I can make it hornier. I clipped the horn off of a plague bearer sprue and made a hole in his knee big enough for it to fit. Part of Nurgle's thing is rebirth and death, shown as trees sprouting up everywhere. His knee now has a sapling growing out of it, and he might want to get that looked at. Oh, he's a beautiful little butterfly. I'm so happy to have this guy in my collection because the normal Demon Prince is a very, very nice model, but it's not that nurgly. It's got a nurgle head, but otherwise it's just a normal like chaos undivided. This little Tinkerbell is unmistakably nurgle. It is just one big booger and it's time to paint that booger. I blasted my Death Lord with Black Primer, getting it deep into his fat folds, and then gave him a Zenithal from above. This will be the cleanest he will ever look. But you know it always has a clean look. That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have new terrain every month. This month, it's the modular Gothic buildings. These impressive structures are designed with competitive wargaming in mind. They are the perfect size, shape, and have functional windows for all your line of sight blocking needs. And we also have Cyber Cherubs for decorating your models and terrain. Now that my prince has been zenithaled, it's time to pick some colors. It's been over a year since I painted one of my Death Guard, but I have no worries about finding the right colors because I only use these paints. These are from a now discontinued line of paint called Imperial Hobby Paint, and these eight colors are the only ones I use for my Death Guard. These colors consist of very transparent minty green and blue, an opaque white and orangey brown, something resembling a black wash, a very superfluous gray, yellow, and pink. The blue, green, and black are basically candy colors, completely see-through, while the other colors are opaque like normal paints, but very watery. These aren't the best paints I own, but the challenge of using only these paints has led to my Death Guard being one of my favorite projects I've ever done. I loaded up my brush with thin down paint and started slapping down colors. I know for sure I want pink on all the flesh. Everything else is random. I slobber down colors without any real plan in mind, like watercolor painting, just letting the colors pool and mix where they want to. Now that I have all my colors on there, it's in a way finished. All the colors are in the right spots. It's just time to make it look purposeful. Focusing on his chest armor, I painted yellow over his chaos symbol and mixed white into the blue and green, highlighting these areas, brightening up the top of his shoulder and having his pec darkened to almost black, and glazing each color over each other so that there's no uniformity to anything on the model. On the right side of his chest, I decided I wanted it to be warm to contrast the coldness of his left half. So I glazed my oranges and yellows, making my green into a wash to outline his details. One trick I used was highlighting with white, then glazing over it with the original color and repeating this until I had some bright poppy highlights. On his shoulder pad, which is more flat than his chest, I used a stippling brushstroke to add in some texture to fill in this space and make it look just as busy as the rest of his armor. His chest and shoulders are now done, and even though it's really the exact same colors they were when I just slapped the paint on, these spots look purposeful and finished. Demon Princes are an incredibly 40k thing, and it reminds me of one of my all-time favorite 40k rules, which came from 6th edition. In a Chaos Army, before the game begins, every model that has the Champion of Chaos rule must roll on the Boon Table. You roll a D66 and consult the chart. And this chart has lots of fun stuff, mostly it's just like plus one toughness, plus one attack. But if you roll a 21 or a 22, that model is replaced with a Chaos Spawn. And if you roll a 65 or a 66, that model is replaced with a Demon Prince. So Chaos Space Marine players, even if you weren't bringing a Demon Prince in your list, you always brought him along because you never know. The Chaos Gods might bless you and you get to bring like an extra 100 point character to your game. I never saw this happen, but the fact that it could was so incredibly fun and fluffy. Looking at my guy, he's kind of minty, like the color of my toothpaste. I've been using a lot of blue and green. I want to focus more on the warm colors on his right leg. I layered up more greens, oranges, and yellows, mixing in white paint to create my highlights. Layering on more and more lighter paints and then glazing them down with thin colors. 
I took special care in all his chaos symbols and used green wash instead of black to keep things vibrant. And I didn't touch any blues when working on this half of his body. My idea for this paint scheme is that he's moldy, and the mold doesn't conform to the shapes of his armor, but just takes the path of least resistance as it grows over him, so any color can appear anywhere on his body. I'm wrapping up the armor, and so now it is time for the flesh. And I have a lot of experience with flesh because I painted up a whole bunch of pox walkers. I painted these guys up for Kill Team. I actually bought them for Kill Team. I got them for an absolute steal on eBay because they were missing one guy. I didn't care for Kill Team because I only needed eight, but now that I need them for proper 40k, I really wish I had that tenth guy. And speaking of Poxwalker frustration, Death Guard have three different fodder units. They have the Poxwalkers, obviously meant for the Death Guard, but they also have access to the Plague Bearers and the Chaos Cultists. And I wouldn't mind spending a few days or maybe even a week like cranking out a whole bunch of these horde units, but I don't want to do it over and over and over again. So hopefully when the Death Guard Codex comes out, it really solidifies the Poxwalkers as the fodder for the Death Guard, because I don't have that much paint left. I glazed on a few more coats of paint to give him a nice rosy complexion that I ruined with orange. I slathered this on like a wash, letting it settle into the recesses. Also, did anyone else notice that there's the shape of a fly carved into his gut? After my wash, I mixed some white paint into his pink and started highlighting working his sickly muscles all the way up to pure white. Then I picked out all his little pimples with yellow, which I also did on his bits of exposed muscle. And speaking of sickly, I came back with my green paint glazing this over portions of his skin. He desperately needs to see a dermatologist, or at least get some exfoliating soap. On his face, it was a little tricky because the paint was really thin and wanted to flow. I used green to add shadows to his face and then picked out his eyes. His weird, weird eyes with white. His one eye is a completely exposed eyeball, and that one I had some fun with, adding in veins and a big old pupil. He's getting really close now, so the next thing is his wings, and his wings are very different, because instead of the super detailed resin, they are perfect smooth plastic, so to get them to match, I need to add some texture. I used a chunk of sponge to stipple on my color palette, layering these one on top of another, making them get progressively lighter and bluer towards the top, then a glazing of yellow. This got me somewhere, but it's not quite right. It doesn't have that purposeful chaos that the rest of the model has, it's just chaos. To fix this, I came back in with a ratty old paintbrush and stippled on some light blue on the top of his wings, glazing blues and greens moving towards his body. Having those transitions helps a lot to make it feel like those wings are a part of him, not just stapled on. He's so close to being done. The only thing left is his big, boxy, blunt sword. And there is one color I haven't touched yet, and that is gray. I haven't really touched it because it's kind of superfluous. I already have black and white, so I do have gray, but... It's there, it's part of my color selection, my limited palette, so I think I want to experiment with it a little bit. I feel like I've mixed up every possible combination of these colors, but the gray is still untouched. On my Plague Marines, I use gray to give their bolters a slightly different feeling to the rest of their psychedelic bodies, so perhaps this same trick will work on the swords to make it stand out. I base coated his sword with gray and then used the black wash to shade the sword doing a quick and dirty non-metallic metal, mixing my gray with white to brighten it up and do some highlights. Once I was happy with the sword, I glazed on a little bit of blue, which was a little overpowering to the gray, but it still looks right. And my orange brown was the perfect thing for rust. With my snotty boy done, it was time for the base. And the base is just all my colors mixed together with a little extra orange. It all combines into a grotesque brown. I glazed on some green and orange to create some variety to the earth, and feeling like it was a little desaturated compared to my previous bases, I added in a little more brown. Then I picked out all his fun little friends on the base, his maggots and skulls, highlighting them using the last little bits of paint on my palette. These eight bottles of paint might be all that exist in the world, so I don't want to waste a drop. But now, it's time to cheat. I used Apple Barrel Gloss Black Paint for the base frame, and my Demon Prince is done. This guy has alleviated a lot of my fears of painting my Death Guard army. I just, in my head, I assumed it would take for ever because I don't use the airbrush, I don't use contrast paint or speed paint, every single thing is done with a brush. But it's really not that bad. This guy took a day to paint and he's a he's a big guy. He's a baby Mortarian. So regular guys aren't going to take even that long to paint. I think I think I've got a good shot of getting my death guard done this year. And I'm really jazzed about my demon prince with wings, a true Nurgle demon prince with wings. This isn't no chaos undivided guy with a little bit of green on him. This is a big booger of a model that is gonna look so good as the centerpiece of my Death Guard army. And what to name my prince of the plague? I'm gonna call him Mr. Potato Head, cause 
His, his head looks like a potato. I don't make the rules. That's his name now. Thanks for watching.